welcome on this tutorial wish all you are well in this tutorial i am going to discuss about gas chromatography chromatography is a technique in which separation of different molecules are based on the molecular structure and molecular composition there are mainly two types of chromatography one is liquid chromatography another one is gas chromatography in this tutorial i will elaborately discuss about gas chromatography entering into the discussion please click the subscribe button it will help me to improve the channel gas chromatograph is a technique of separation of molecules from a mixture of mostly organic and inorganic compounds also and the separation is based on the properties or characteristics like volatility and polarity operation of this gas chromatograph is related with two phases one is mobile phase another one is stationary phase the separation method can be affected by the polarity of stationary phase temperature carrier gas flow length of column and amount of material etc there are two types of gas chromatograph one is gas solid chromatograph another one is gas liquid chromatograph for gas solid chromatograph the mobile phase is gas normally it is inert gas and the stationary phase is solid like silica alumina calcium carbonate magnesia starch etc for gas liquid chromatograph the mobile phase is gas such as helium argon krypton and the stationary phases is a high boiling point liquid adsorbed onto a solid now entering into gas chromatography instrumentation this is a very simple figure for gas chromatography the two phases are mobile phase and stationary phase mobile phase is normally having the carrier gas and the stationary phase is normally the column the separation of different components mainly happened inside the column mobile phase is carrier gas which is conducted from the cylinder through pressure and flow regulator to a sample injection port maintained at a certain temperature which ensures rapid vaporization of the solute this is that different extra arrangement which is pressure regulator flow controller and rotameter these arrangements are used to maintain a particular control of this carrier gas supply and to monitor flow of this carrier gas supply gas and liquid sample are injected by the syringe through a self sealing silicon rubber septum in the injection port this is the injection port it is having a rubber septum the sample is inserted into here by using a syringe when the needle of the syringe is inserted into the septum the gas to be analyzed entered into the column and when the lead needle is pulled out the septum is auto refilled means no porous into the septum will be there the solute vapor mixes almost instantaneously with the flowing carrier gas and is swept into the column which is the stationary phase when the gas to be analyzed are entered into this place then that is instantaneously mixed with the carrier gas and the gas to be analyzed with the carrier gas will flow through the column different components are ultimately separated and it comes at the output of this column column is coiled and placed into an oven to maintain a particular temperature as a result of that one component will be more or less gaseous than other the function of this oven is to maintain a particular temperature for the column according to that temperature the different components will have different degree of gaseous formation the component which is most gaseous that will have higher speed while travel through the column the component which have less gaseous that will take more time to traverse through the column the separation of compounds is based on different strength of interaction of the compounds with the stationary phases 
the stronger the interaction is the longer the compounds interact with the stationary phase and the more time it takes to migrate through the column means retention time is longer the separation of compounds is based on different strengths of interaction of the compounds with the stationary phases when the mixture of different components will traverse through the column the components will interact differently with the column one component will have more interaction with the column another component will have less interaction with the column the stronger the interaction is the longer the compound interact with the stationary phase and the more time it takes to migrate through the column means retention time is longer the component which is having more interactive property with the column that will have less speed and it will take more time to traverse the path of this column the interaction depends on two properties of the compound one is volatility and another one is polarity with respect to two characteristics volatility and polarity the interaction time with the column with different components will be different so according to the retention time one component will reach at the outlet of the column faster another component will reach here at a later time so the reaching time at the outlet of this column for different components into the mixture are different at the end of the column detector is placed which produces an electrical signal corresponding to the quantity of the solute leaving the column detector detects different signals and it will produce the particular signal proportionate with amounts of different components detector signal can be directly applied to a recorder to record it and to show it with graphical representation or the signal can be applied to the microprocessor or computer for further processing of the signal and displaying the signal in different ways chromatogram is the best one as indication which represents peak of different components with time the detector output is the input of the recorder for recording and displaying that output may be input of the microprocessor or computer for further processing by any means we can get the chromatogram and that chromatogram is the ultimate indication of the different components which were into the mixer for better explanation i am taking one example say in a particular mixer three components are there component a component b and component c these three components have different properties say component a is most volatile and non polar component b is polar and moderately volatile component c is polar and less volatile and the stationary phase is say polar in nature among these three components a is having most volatile and non polar as this is non polar so it will not interact with the polar stationary phase and also as this is most volatile so a will move through the column with the highest speed it will reach at the outlet of the column first say a has been reached at the outlet rest component b and c component b is polar component c is also polar means these two will interact with the polar stationary phase but b is moderately volatile and c is less volatile according to the volatility b is more volatile than c so speed of b will be higher than speed of c while b and c will move through the column so b will reach to the outlet of the column after a and c will reach after b so from this example we can say a will reach first 
then b will reach then c will reach at the outlet of column then detector will detect this signal that signal ultimately will be the indication as the chromatogram from that chromatogram we can easily identify which one is a which one is b which one is c as per the retention time and peak details so what are the basic parts of gas chromatograph first one is the carrier gas supply next one is the sample injection system next part is the column next part is the oven into which the column is placed next part is the detection system and next part is the recording computer microprocessor system i am explaining features of each system very quickly the carrier gas is supplied from a source in general the carrier gas is helium hydrogen nitrogen argon carbon dioxide etc the properties of this carrier gas is that it should not interact with the sample as well as it should not interact with the stationary phase the carrier gas should maintain a constant flow to maintain that constant flow this pressure regulator flow controller have been used this is one example of sample injection port very small amount of sample is injected normally it is around microliter and that sample is injected through the septum this is that septum this is needle of syringe by using this syringe sample is injected to the inlet of the column this is entrance of the carrier gas it carries the sample to the column the whole sample injection part is maintained with a constant temperature which is normally 50 degree higher than the highest boiling point of a component into the mixer so that all the components will be in gaseous form there are mainly two types of column on is packet column on is capillary column both columns look like the coil this is packet column this is capillary column with this type of coil formation it is placed into the oven packet column is inert solid support material coated with liquid stationary phase this is the cross section of the packet column inside this this granular shapes are the solid part it is coated with very thin liquid surface normally this column is 1.5 to 10 meter in length and have an internal diameter of 2 to 4 mm this is the figure of capillary column normally it is around 30 meter long with internal diameter of around 247 micrometer it has a 0.25 micrometer coating of the liquid phase at interior surface there are three types of construction of capillary column one is wall coated open tubular one is porous layer open tubular next one is support coated open tubular these are the cross sectional view of different capillary columns oven is used to maintain the temperature normally temperature of oven is controlled to an accuracy of 0.1 degree centigrade in general temperature of the oven is lower than the injection point temperature so that some components of the mixer may condense at the beginning of the column it will form different degree of gaseous formation of different components sometimes the temperature is maintained with a gradient means at the initial stage temperature is a lower value then temperature is increased a little more then temperature is increased a little more it will help to use the volatility property of different components and using that volatility property different component will reach at the outlet of the column at different time different types of detectors are used to detect the components flame ionization detector electron capture detector thermal conductive detector flame photometric detector mass spectrometric detector nitrogen phosphorus detector or thermoionic specific detectors argon ionization detectors i will discuss operations of different detectors advantages and disadvantages of these detectors in a separate tutorial after detector 
the detecting signal is passed to the recorder or the computer system ultimately to get the display as indication. Recording system provides readable signal. It is proportional in magnitude to the amount of components. The recording system may have the computer that acquires the data, process the data using standard software, store the data and then display the result on a recorder which will usually include the real-time chromatogram. This is the figure of real-time chromatogram. This chromatogram consists of different peaks with respect to retention time. Say this is time 0, starting time. So this is the first peak is having the retention time from here to here. This is the second peak which is having retention time higher than the first peak. This is third peak which is having higher retention time than the second peak like this. So according to the retention time, it can be identified which are the different components are there into the mixture. Because the instrument is already calibrated, if the retention time is like this, the component will be say A. If the retention time is like this, the component will be say B. So according to the different retention time, ultimately we can get idea about which type of components are there into the mixture. The area of each peaks indicates the relative amount of each components means from the area we can get concentration of different components into the mixture. Having higher area the concentration of that component is higher. Having lower area concentration of that component is lower. From this chromatogram we can see the first component is having highest concentration and the fourth component is having lowest concentration. Advantage of gas chromatograph Due to its high efficiency, gas chromatograph allows the separation of the components of complex mixtures in a reasonable time. Accurate quantitation Usually sharp reproducible peaks are obtained. Mature technique with many application nodes are available for the user. Multiple detectors with high sensitivity are available which can also be used in series with mass spectrometer since mass spectrometer is a non-destructive technique. The disadvantage of gas chromatograph It is limited to thermally stable and volatile compounds only. Most GC detectors are destructive except for mass spectrometer. Means maximum detectors destroy the sample completely. So this is discussion on gas chromatograph. I have discussed operation of gas chromatograph, different parts and functions of gas chromatograph, how the different molecules are separated by using gas chromatograph, what are the different advantages and disadvantages of gas chromatograph. Please subscribe the channel and put your comments and queries in comment section.